You know what? That's a hard speech to follow up with Dan just gave. You know, it's very heartwarming. But um, yeah, I hope you guys don't mind that I have mine on paper. <laughs> kind of wrote this this morning. You know, um, had a lot of stuff going on this past week uh, with the Phoenixville land grab and just so many other things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's some there's some tyrants in government, as we all know. But anyway, a great man once said, laws that forbid the carrying of arms disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. Such laws make things worse for the assaulted and better for the assailants. They serve rather to encourage than to prevent homicides. For an unarmed man may be attacked with greater confidence than an armed man. Right now over at Villanova University, gun haters are gathering today up until about 4 o'clock for a Sandy Hook vigil. The, the gun grabbers, that's what they are, the gun grabbers, they're using these tactics, they're using these tragic events as an excuse to further their own criminal agenda to take away our natural inherent rights. Let's be better than them. Because think about it, if a teacher had a gun, they would have stopped that tra tragic incident, isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Lives would have been saved. So. Now, I want to ask everybody, we can take a moment of silence for the children. You know, we're, we're not the bad people. We're just responsible gun owners. But they want to shove it in our faces. So if everybody could just take one minute and maybe just say to yourselves and how you feel and just remember the children. We're not going to let them, let them take that away from us, too. And maybe we all can go over there afterwards, right? That might be fun. I just hate, you know, gun gun haters, liberals. Let's call them for what they are, progressives that just use that as an excuse. Seriously, they use it to their own advantage. I could just see it every time there's a tragic incident, there's a shooting. Obama's just sitting in the Oval Office, just just laughing, thinking about how he can use that against us. Well, the only way that we can change course is by doing two things. We need to run for political office. And we also need an organized armed unified front outside of the existing political system not as any political party not as left wing or right wing but as a group of people we the people i was reading the headlines today seeing that new york city is confiscating rifles and shotguns what? yes let's give new york city a big boo you know Yay! you know nanny bloomberg isn't that what they call them? So they're confiscating rifles and shotguns. New York City's ban on rifles and shotguns, um, for example, that have more than five rounds, is now being enforced. The police are sending out letters, just for now, telling gun owners to turn over their rifles and shotguns, or else face the consequences. That was on the news today, the headlines. Well, guess what? We must start to say no. If this ever happens in here in PA, we will not comply. Isn't that right, guys? We're not going to give away our guns willingly. We will not comply. Rosa Parks didn't comply. We're not going to comply either. A great example of non-compliance also is our founding fathers. They did not comply when they dumped tea into the river. They did not comply when the British came for their guns. And the British. <laughs> Are, are you from England, sir? Okay, we have. We love you, Adrian. We love you, Adrian. He's he's from England. He's a, you know, he's American now. He's a, per <laughs> a proud American. Proud American. Yeah. Well, they didn't comply, and we wrote the Declaration of Independence. We said no to their unjust laws. We did not comply. That's what we need to start doing. Because if our liberties liberties are taken away, we must always disobey unjust and immoral laws. Because a man is only rightful to do so. If they're obligated to do so, if a, raw, if a law is wrong, it's wrong. Just because it's a law does not mean that it's right, you know? I'd like to read uh, in the Pennsylvania Constitution, Article 1, Section 21. Who all knows that we have a Pennsylvania State Constitution anyway, right? Okay, we're in a good crowd right here. Well, this is it right here. We do? And I have free uh, copies we can give away later. I just got to double check the car. Well, I'd like to read something that's very important. Article 1, Section 21. Remember that. It says, the right of the citizens to bear arms in defense of themselves and the state. To bear defense, to bear arms in defense of them and the state. Very important. Shall not be questioned. That is more important than the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, guys. 
It is. I'm going to read that one more time. Let this sink in your heads. The right of the citizens to bear in defense of themselves and the state shall not be questioned. And it's not going to be questioned just so as long as we live in this gray state. The federal government does not respect our state constitution because they've talked about disarming the people. But there are many good bills in our state government that if passed could further preserve the right to keep and bear arms, no matter what Obama and his cronies or the federal government does. For example, HB 357. What a great name. 357. That's what Daryl Metcalf introduced. It's a bill that was introduced in our General Assembly. It is an act providing that any, any federal law which attempts to register, restrict, or ban a firearm or to limit the size of a magazine of a firearm in the Commonwealth shall be unenforceable in the Commonwealth and imposing penalties. So the federal government wants to come in here and restrict our firearms, we're not going to let them. Because that's what nullification is, guys. That's why our founding fathers put in the Tenth Amendment. Now I ask you, what country could preserve its liberties if the rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of the resistance? Yes. What country could preserve its liberties if there are rulers? And that's why we must remind government that they are not our boss. We are their boss. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Steve Petrosky, Montgomery County Citizens for Liberty. Now we have William Taylor Ryle.